logistics. Now, many organizations are trying to say, how can we get our goods and services delivered, addressed, get them to the people we need to in the most efficient manner, not just because they want to save time, but they want to save money and they want to lower their impact all at the same time. So we're going to talk about how taking a comprehensive look at your logistics platform and how you perform your day-to-day -day work, how it's delivered, how it's, it's carried out, and how you can actually make small tweaks here or there that can have a dramatic impact from an environmental perspective that also help your financial bottom line at the same time. UPS, we've all seen their brown trucks delivering you know, packages all around our neighborhoods, around businesses. So they created Orion, which is a navigating tool that you know, not only planned the most efficient route for drivers, you know, similar to what you might use on your phone, but theirs had a difference where it eliminated left-hand turns because when you think about it, when you're in a car, where are you idling most? When you're sitting there trying to make that left-hand turn and all the traffic's coming back, and it seems counterintuitive to take right-hand turns and keep using that, but by actually, you know, when you think about it, if, if I'm just going one place, but if I'm going multiple places and I find a way to eliminate as many left-hand turns as possible, you're going to drive more efficiently. You're going to save a lot of fuel and it, it might be actually save time at the same time. So what UPS did was they, by implementing Orion, they found that they've reduced their operating costs by over $300 million and they've created mileage savings close to $50 million annually. And on top of that, they've reduced their fuel usage by 10 million gallons, which has a massive greenhouse gas impact in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by over 100,000 metric tons annually. Just so I'm not playing favorites, FedEx has also employed a range of initiatives to not only improve operational efficiency, but ways to reduce our emissions and lower costs. Now, they don't have the Orion system, but they've got their own way of doing it. And by using a number of these initiatives all combined together, they've also found a way to save about $280 million just by looking at how they're making their deliveries in the logistics systems, which help them avoid over 1.6 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent. Now, it's great for these giant companies that have the, the bandwidth and the dollars to invest in these massive capital campaigns or new systems. So what do you do if you're a municipality or a small business? You know, the Eastern Municipal Water District, for example, in Riverside, California, what they did was they put in telematic devices on their different vehicles, 351 of them to be exact, that actually focused on changing driver habits. You know, instead of people slamming on the gas and slamming on the brakes, how could they, you know, go a little bit slower, a little bit faster? How could they address some of the different driver habits? And just by, by working with their employees and by putting in these devices, they found out that their employees actually drove about 165,000 fewer miles. Now the savings on that, you know, they, they found that fuel costs, you know, declined by $79,000 and they were able to save, you know, in terms of employee productivity, which went back to the taxpayer and the rate payer, close to $350,000 in their first six months. So this is a way where by addressing driver's habits, you can, you can actually find ways that, you know, it might say, well, I know how to do my job. Don't tell me how to drive. But by just actually putting in some devices that track how people are driving, they'll drive better. They'll start looking at ways to think about it. You'll save money. You'll save fuel and it'll be better for the environment. Beyond the technology and the routing, how you're getting there, Chavez Trucking, look at when they were, you know, thinking about their different trucks, you know, could we replace some of our old heavy diesel trucks with ones that had, you know, better computer systems that actually turned off the truck when it was idling for longer than three minutes? And they found that they were actually able to increase their fuel efficiency by over one and a half miles per gallon, which is huge when again, when a you know, thing might get only between eight to 10 miles per gallon. Um, and their financial savings were over $80,000 per year. So this is a way that they can reduce fuel usage just by addressing idling. When you think about it, you know, it used to be that we'd go out and especially cold days, you would, you would idle your car or engine to get the, the cab warm and the engine running. Nowadays, cars and trucks are built so much better that they don't need giant idle times. And you just tell your employees, okay, you know, Put on your jacket before you go outside. Don't count on your cab to heat you up in the morning, and you're going to find dramatic impacts in terms of by tackling idling. You're going to save money. You're going to be better for the environment. It goes beyond shipping by air or by road, but you know a lot of stuff still happens by train. 
SCT Logistics, for example, they found a way to put in a more fuel-efficient motor into its locomotives that were going from Perth to Melbourne across you know, the whole country and the whole continent of Australia. And they found that by doing that, that they were saving close to $11,000 per run just by addressing the, the efficiency of the locomotive engine. And this reduced their greenhouse gas emissions by about 8 to 10% and their fuel consumption by 10,000 liters per run. Another example of logistics is just a, a simple small um, door company in Snohomish County, Washington called Tiz's Doors. And this is an example where they had delivery typically every day of the week. You know, you, you know doors are made. When they're made, they're immediately delivered. And they thought, you know, gosh, Fridays are, are crazy in terms of traffic. And, you know, we can do so many fewer deliveries because our drivers just spend so much time in traffic. So they decided to say, okay, we're just going to actually reduce our number of days that we deliver. We're just going to tell people that people that can wait an extra day or two, okay, that's going to be the case. We're not going to deliver on Fridays. And they were able to, you know, you think about it, the emissions that are reduced in that because, you know, you're one day of the week you're not driving but they also found that they were actually more productive because then they were they were trying to shift more deliveries into the days with less traffic so they could do more deliveries on the same number of days um, and have just the about the exact same impact from a financial perspective but dramatically reduce the greenhouse gas emissions reduced to from the um, delivery items so again as you're thinking about what are all the things i can do in terms of tackling logistics First, map out your supply chain. Map out how you do your business. Are, you know, are there ways that we can do it in a more efficient manner? Think of how your deliveries are done, how everything happens from a logistical standpoint. Can you combine trips? Can things that were put on air, can they be put on ground? Can you purchase more locally? These are all things you can be thinking of that will reduce your impact from your logistics that can save you money and be better for the environment at the same time.